great. Uh, hello, hello. I hope uh, uh, you can hear me. Can somebody confirm that they can see my screen and hear me? Awesome, awesome. That was very quick uh, feedback. Very nice. Uh, so welcome to Web Components for Java developers. Um, just a little bit about myself before we get started, just very quickly. So my name is Alejandro Duarte. And um, well, I'm, I've written three, three books, actually, uh, about the, um, uh, the topic or related to the topic that we are going to cover today. So first one is uh, Vadin 7 UI Design by Example. It's a, it's a book for kind of beginners, people who, um, who are learning Vadin. Okay, so my, my screen is not shared. Let me see, because according to this, it says it is sharing. Let me just uh, try again. Share. Well, that give me the, the chance to get back to the first slide, I believe. All right, let's move the chat over here. Is it uh, visible now? No, it's nice. Okay, <laughs> good. Well, we are the start of the of the of the topic. So I was saying uh, that I'm the author of uh, some books. So the first one uh, uh, on Vadin Seven, the second one data centric applications with Vadin Eight, and recently I published a new one. Uh, practical Vadin, it covers Vadin, the recent versions of Vadin. So I think I use their Vadin 20 and we are in 21. So um, this is the latest uh, resource uh, for those who are uh, eager to learn more about, about Vadin. And, but anyway, so this uh, talk's not really about me. This is about web components for Java developers. And when I say Java developers, it's mostly uh, backend, backend developers. Um, so, Please, before we continue, please feel free to interrupt me at any any point and mute yourself and 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 ask your questions or uh, give me feedback on what what you see on the screen, and send your messages to the to the chat. So I see um, that uh, we have uh, people already uh, telling me that, that that the screen was sharing of that. So uh, what we are going to do in this in this talk is we are going to add first one part web components standards. And yes, we're gonna use JavaScript there, but I'm gonna do it so that uh, you don't really need to know anything about JavaScript in order to follow. So it's uh, for, again, like I said before, for Java developers, uh, but I really want to do this part because this is when you realize that you don't need even frameworks to uh, implement the web components. And so it, it gives you a very, very good idea of how these web components work as well in the, in the browser. But then we're gonna add another part to the talk where we are going to see how to do uh, web components using my favorite language, I have to say, uh, programming language that is uh, uh, Java. So uh, that part is gonna be uh, very interesting. And what we are going to try to do is we're going to run this stack uh, for JCon online 2021, but we need to catch some exceptions, right? So in case of a an internet, internet failure exception, what I have to do is just use a phone internet connection, right? And that should be all right. But there's another one which is very famous, the in or infamous <laughs> demo effect exception. So in that case, I'm gonna see if any of the attendees um, maybe has the fix. So if you have the fix, uh, let me know and, and I'll just apply it. This is the agenda and it was in form of code because we are going to uh, be coding mostly, most of the time what we're going to do is uh, uh, coding. So let's get started. I'm going to jump to the ID. I'm using IntelliJ, IntelliJ IDEA today. And I'll prepare this uh, empty, literally empty project. There's nothing there, nothing at all. And let's create a new HTML file. Like I said, we're going to, to, to do some uh, JavaScript uh, today. And let me add, let's create just some HTML so we get the idea of, of, of uh, what's the, how would be the feeling, right? Of, of using a web components. So not hell, hello. 
uh, let's add also maybe a paragraph that says um, this is a web component component and in fact in fact this is not a component yet so, yet so we need to fix this later right and here i'm going to add a div with uh what can we do here an image so i'm going to an, an image and for that you know what let me show you what i'm doing in the in the browser so i'm going to reconfigure this thing like that and uh so the image for the image i'm going to use of course jcon 2021 copy image address i'm going to paste it here let's see if it's there yeah and let's add a paragraph that says um jcon 2021 all right, so we have something, but this looks uh, horrible. So let's add some um, styles container container, and over here, let's add the styles. So for container, let me get rid of this part over here to avoid um, distraction. Uh, the container, what can we do with the container? Maybe border, border, uh, one, one pixel solid. Um, some kind of gray, I guess. Uh, dark gray should should work. Yeah. Uh, where else can we do? Maybe um, text alignment could be this in the center. Yeah. What else should we do here? Maybe the container uh, image. Uh, let's uh, let's kind of expand right the the image. So with one hundred percent. And maybe uh, it would be a good idea to do to add some padding. So, for example, one en. All right. Let's maybe add some some style here because this, this is going to be interesting for later. Um, um, let me see. I think I have I forgot the the shortcut for this uh, column selection mode. All right. Um, container paragraphs. They are going to be, uh, let's just add some, no, actually font, maybe font style, italic. Just that we see something different there. Okay, so we have something to play with. And remember, this is not a web co component yet, but I also want to add some behavior to this thing. So let's add a on click. And we're going to create a new function, JavaScript function called um, animate element, not anim animated, but animate, animate element, which element? These. So this uh, is referencing this component, right? The image. Of course, we need to. Let's not do it here. Let's let's do it maybe after the div script. We need to create that that function to avoid typos. I'm gonna copy paste that function, trying to avoid that exception that I showed you before, right? Uh, element the demo effect uh, exception. Um, all right, and with this element, what we're going to do is just add a class name. Let's invent a new one, uh, animated, animated. Yeah, and of course we have to create that here, animated. And what I'm gonna do is just add transform, rotate 360 degrees. So let's see if that works. If I click this, it doesn't work. Uh, what was that? Uh, first demo effect uh, let's see animated animated uh -huh. okay anybody in the in the audience anybody sending a, a, a fix i'm gonna send you a, a copy of my book at some point what, what was the problem here Okay, let's refocus here on this. So I have the image, on click, animate element, this. Do I have any typos? Looks correct. Document ready, missing. Uh, I don't think so because the script is after this. So it shouldn't be a problem, but, but um, 
there's a good one. Uh, why? Why is this not working? Let me check my maybe my notes. I think I have notes um, somewhere here. So I just, I'm just going to try to see if I made some kind of uh, mistake. Of course, I have made some kind of mistake. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Class name equals animated. Uh, it's not so right. What is going on? I mean, is this incorrect? No, it is correct. Maybe I didn't use the correct, the correct event. No, it's it's correct. On one click. Yeah, thank you. All right. So Andreas, uh, uh, try to get in touch with me. I, I don't know, maybe Twitter or something, and I'll send you a book. Yeah, that's actually what happened. It's actually or related. Transition duration, we're not seeing it. So let's uh, let's let one second. Oh, that was very good. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, I forgot that. So now, now we can see. Did you see that? Uh, let's click it again. Now it's rotating, right? 360 degrees, but now it's taking one second. So I just, I just missed uh, this part. I was trying to maybe go way too fast, uh, but thank you. Now, if I click this more times, it doesn't really work. So <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, thanks for your comments there. Uh, so we need to add something more here. So let's fix this uh, element dot um, add event listener. And this is transition end. So how about didn't make a typo there? And let's use an, it's kind of a Lambda expression, but in the, in, the, in the world of JavaScript, it's called arrow function, right? And guess what we have to do? Element dot class name equals nothing, right? That's it. So we are kind of removing the class name. So if I click this many times, now it rotates in a funny way. <laughs> anyway, so it's working. And, um, and we have something that it's not a web component. It's not a web component. So let's fix that actually. Now we can remove this first, fix me. And it would be great if, or, or how can I motivate this, this part? So if we want to have several, we can do this, right? Copy paste. And actually I, I think they should work, yeah. So that's one way, but uh, it's a bit, mm, maybe not ideal. So we can encapsulate this into a web component, or more specifically, you can say it's a custom element. And so that's where I'm going to teach you uh, with this uh, in this first part of the of the of the talk. So it would be uh, very nice if we had something like, all right. So if you think about this, like an avatar that it's animated, so animated avatar, right? It would be cool to have that render. Now the browser has no idea what to do with that tag. I don't know the tag, so what can I render? Nothing, I'll just ignore it. It's what the browser says. And uh, to solve that, we just need some JavaScript. And there are no libraries. Remember that we didn't add anything at all here? Nothing, just, just uh, vanilla JavaScript. So we need to do two things. First, we need to create a class, for example, animated avatar or whatever could be any, any name you want, extends HTML element. And the other thing we need to do, let me mark this like with one side, so it's easier to see it later. And the number two thing that we need to, to do is to use the custom element, it's here, object that it's available in the document object model API that, that the browser implements, right? So this vanilla uh, JavaScript, and let's just call define, and we pass the name of the um, of the element that we want to create. To avoid typos, I copy pasted it. And one important thing is that it needs to contain a dash here, right? And then we need to pass the name of the class that this uh, element is connected to, right? That is um, animated avatar. So now the browser knows that. And when it sees a animated avatar tag like this, it knows how to use this. 
this class. But of course, the class doesn't do anything at the moment. So let's let's make something interesting there. So this is how you define a constructor JavaScript, and then you have to call super here. So this is an HTML element. Hence, we can set the inner HTML, right? And let's use uh, multi-line strings here to get the uh, the bit that we wanted, which is this. Let me copy it like this, actually, or let's cut it from here because we don't need it there anymore. And maybe let's format this a bit nicer. There you go. And uh, when I save the file, you can see that we have the JCon uh, image there or the whole avatar, except that I'm clicking. I don't know if you can hear that noise. <laughs> the mouse. Oh, poor mouse. It's, I'm clicking it way, way too, too hard. <laughs> uh, but it's not working. Of course, it's not working. How could that work if we have all this code here, right? But it's not only that. So let's go to the class. It's here. This is the scope of the class. We need that. The problem is that uh, this is no longer this when, when, when the uh, expression is evaluated. So we cannot do it this way. We can do it in a different way. And that gives me the opportunity to explain another concept of custom elements, which by the way, is the first standard that we are exploring. This is called custom elements. It's a standard. Uh, there's something called the life cycle of the elements. And it's kind of functions that get called for you. And then you can hook your own uh, logic. So one, one of those is the uh, um, uh, connected callback. And there are several others, but let's use that connected callback. I need to be careful to, to type this correctly. And this is gonna be called when this element is effectively attached in the DOM here, in the document, all right? Not in memory, no, nothing like that, just when it's actually here in the, in the, um, in the document. And then we get the, the opportunity to, for example, say something like, uh, let's use query, query selector, right? It's a bit like uh, jQuery. Let's get the image element. And let's assign this to a new variable. IMG, I'm going to call it just like the name of the element there. And with this, we can say on click. It's going to be an arrow function again, right? Like a Lambda expression. And what do we need to do here? Animate. This that animate, I was there actually, animate element. Which element? Image, right? So let's see, if I click, now it works. Oh, perfect. Now, um, it would be great if we didn't have this hard coded here, right? It would be better if we put it over here. Let me format this uh, in a different way like that. So it would be cool to have, for example, image uh, is gonna be this URL. And the same for, uh, for the, what is that title? Name, maybe, name. Let's use name, come on, tell you the idea. Let me type name equals, and, uh, and let's move this over there. So not here, but here. Of course, now we, we don't have anything there because we are not doing anything at all with this thing. So let's try to solve that part. How, how can we solve that part? And since we have this connected callback here, we can do it right, right away. Moreover, we already have the image, so we can do something with the image. So for the image, we need to set this property. But first, well, we need the image object or yeah, object. We have it. Then we need to set this property, image dot or attribute. What is the name? Source. And what is the value? Whatever is in the image um, attribute here, how can we get that one? Well, we are in this class and this is an animated avatar. So get attribute image. And now we have the image right there. So can you guess how to do it with, with the other one? Query selector, 
we only have one paragraph, so I'm gonna use that. Uh, let's call it p, p dot um, inner text. That's the only difference. Which one? Well, this get attribute just exactly the same. And now we are going to get the name, right? So we're getting the attribute name from the animated avatar, which happens to be that. And then we should have jcon over here. Very nice. Okay, so this is uh, almost ready, I think it's working, but something I don't like is that the styles are still outside this encapsulated thing that we have here, right? But that's actually very simple to, to, to fix. We just need to move it over here. And let me format that. I have to do it manually because uh, the, the shortcut doesn't work when it's inside the string template. All right, so this is working still and everything is now encapsulated. So we could do something like, let's do something like, uh, let's add an, another, another animated avatar, animated. Actually, let's just copy this. That'll be way quicker. And let's add, let's add, just to check that it's working. Duke here. We need the image. And I think the open JDK uh, Duke gallery, I think it's something like that, that I found a nice gallery of Dukes. Which one should we use? Uh, which one do you guys prefer over here? Any wishes? Any wishes? No wishes. Uh, if no wishes, I'm gonna pick uh, red ribbon. Which which one is that? That's just cheers. Actually, yeah, that would be great, right? Copy image address. Yeah, that's just. We do this. Because the, how, how do you how do you spell that? I spelled it wrong. I'm pretty sure I made a mistake. Where is she? Where is she? No, it's correct. All right. Like this? Are you sure? All right. It seems that's correct. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Oh, I didn't paste the image. There is. Does it spin? I would be better if it spinned, maybe. Oh no, that's the, that's the right way to spin, right? To avoid <laughs> dropping the wine. Very nice. Uh, good call on that one. Uh, so it works. So now, now you can imagine that we can have this thing in many other uh, HTML elements, right? Let me just check the time, all right. Uh, however, let me show you something. Let's say, okay, if we are uh, just uh, developing our application and then the template needs to change because we need to style all the paragraphs with, for some reason, the color red, just so that we actually say, it, or let, let's pick blue instead. All right. And now, okay, this is what we wanted to do, but, but not these. So it's kind of contaminating, it's, it's the way uh, many people put it, contaminating the, the CSS inside uh, the web component. And the other way around, actually, if we if we did it uh, from here, would kind of contaminate uh, the other one. But we can solve that using the second standard that I wanted to show you today, which is called Shadow DOM. And for that, we need to attach it, attach Shadow DOM. And this receives a, uh, um, um, an object, I believe, with mode, always use mode open because then with that we can use this uh, this reference here which is uh, shadow shadow root right so instead of saying the inner HTML of the kind of the whole document we are going to say to this thing called shadow root which is kind of an encapsulation of all this HTML and it doesn't yeah again contaminate the outside so by doing that, we have the shadow uh, root 
uh, initialized. Initialized. However, it's not working, and that's because if we go to the code here, we are saying this the query selector, and remember that's like the whole thing. And so we need to instead of that use uh, the shadow root, right? And I guess the same here, and we should get the things back. And look, look at the color of this black. It's back to what we wanted, and this is still blue. So that's the second standard um, that I want to show you. And actually, with these two standards, you can do pretty much uh, all the thing. Now let's touch on how to extend these uh, components. What if uh, we encapsulated it so so, um, or the components so so good that other developers want to use it, but you know, there are always cases in which they would like to add something to it. So for example, can we add a button here or or, an, or some custom HTML at the end? Uh, how to do that? So I'll show you how to do it. We create, uh, I think it's a slot component and we give it a name. Footer, for example. And so now developers, this, this does nothing really, no, no changes. But now the developers who are using this, or, or if we are using this ourselves, we get the chance to get inside, let's go here, inside the uh, element, right? Inside the, in between the two, the opening and, and closing text. And add any kind of, of uh, HTML here, really. Anything, this could be as complicated or as, or as simple as, as we wanted. Uh, it doesn't matter, we can add a button. Um, what can we do there, a uh, website? Or agenda, for example. And if we give one of these, all these elements, the, I think it's slot, yes, slot, and we pass footer, then we get the button here. So, so now we can uh, extend these uh, web components somehow. So it's up to the, the web component developer to, to include uh, extension points, if you wish. Very nice. So, um, we have covered two standards. Let's just uh, quickly uh, go through the code again. The first one is uh, custom elements. Just extend HTML element, use custom elements.define, configure the element, and then you can code your web component there as you wish, right? Um, now, Something nice would be maybe to have this in a separate file so we kind of start to, to see it more organized. So let me create a new uh, JavaScript file, animated avatar, could be any name that you want. Of course, it makes sense to name it like that. And source, animated avatar. So it should work as before. But now we can reuse it by just uh, including the script. Uh, so if we have many of these documents, uh, we can we can reuse the, the animated avatar uh, from all of those. And we only have to maintain that thing in one at one place, right? This one here. Very good. As you can imagine, uh, developers have been playing with with uh, web components, and there are a ton of websites that already use that. It was a really bad, uh, you can tell I'm a, a backend developer, right? <laughs> really bad CSS styling. Uh, it, it works when it's small, so <laughs> anyway, so there are there are sets of components that are ready uh, to use. One of those is the one provided by, by Valin. So let me try to, actually I know the URL, so it's uh, components. And, and this is not the only set of components. There are many other uh, set of components that kind of they look all, all more or less the same and they are used in a, in a similar way. So they are coherent. Uh, Vanin provides all these uh, web components, some checkboxes with, with a bunch of, of uh, features there, combo box with, for example, lazy loading or a custom field by kind of um, composing from other, other components. The date picker, date picker is actually really, really good. It's maybe one of the best, if not the best, I would say it's the best uh, uh, date picker in the market in terms of functionality and uh, usability. Uh, so let's go here, HTML. 
example, let's see some code. I promise this would be all about code. So here you can see that they are using this uh, Vadin date picker, which is a web component or a custom element. This is one here, right? Um, that's how we use it. Of course, there is an API, so you can do a bunch of things with it, uh, with JavaScript. But the cool thing about this set of components is that it has kind of Java wrappers. Maybe you can you can call it like that. So on top of that custom element, there is a Java API. So again, uh, examples, code, code. I want to see the code. I bet we all want to see the code. So instead of using uh, the the element in an HTML document, we use Java new date picker, right? Then we say the placeholder, which is where it's inside the, the date picker, this string. And we can set the date, we can set a uh, bunch of other things, minimum uh, date, maximum, all these kind of things. Mm. Set it read only, well, you name it. And there are really many, many, many web components. Uh, how can I get back to the list? Come on. Oh, I didn't click. Okay. So date picker, date time picker. So that's another control here. Um, email, email field, list, bo list box, uh, number field with controls to quickly uh, change that a value, password fields. Uh, I guess anything you need, uh, this pretty cool upload with multiple um, files kind of at the same time and uh, error handling, visualization and interaction, uh, accordion, a dialogue, the grid. The grid's also really, really powerful. Uh, it has a lot of features. It's good for lazy loading as well. It doesn't use a lot of uh, memory in the, in the browser. Icons, how many icons do we have here? Let's see, I think they mentioned it somewhere here. 600, more than 600 icons, free to use in your applications. Uh, what else? Uh, everything, everything you can you can expect from, from a, when you're developing business applications. Menu bar, I just want to go through some of the, the, the components so you get the idea, right? Uh, there are some, this is, by the way, good that we arrived to this part. All this that I showed you, it's uh, Apache 2.0, the license. So they are free uh, to use. And there are just uh, some uh, commercial uh, components. Then these are not free, but it doesn't mean that you cannot use uh, Vine without them. It's just, for example, this will save you a lot of time. Crud, crud component with very few lines of code. You can get a screen that shows the data with filters and um, and um, the forms to kind of edit, I'll show you, edit the, or add a new item, right? For any plain old Java object. Uh, but this is, uh, so this, this one is not free and you can imagine you can just implement yours and make it reusable, right? You can just use text field, the grid, button. Uh, I guess these are buttons with icons to just build in fact, in fact, I did that the directory and it's free directory. I did it in my defense. I did it before Vadin launched that one. So I wasn't really competing with them. Uh, I guess now I am <laughs> competing with that uh, component but that's only good. This is free. Of course, this is only supported by this guy. Uh, the other one is supported by, by Vadin the company. So you, you, uh, that has uh, uh, a lot of value, right? I just wanted to show you the, the basic uh, usage. And this is what Vadin allowed me to do, to create this kind of thing. So I have a POJU, right? It's some uh, uh, validations, uh, validation API annotations. And you just create a new CRUD by saying new grid CRUD, which, which type user in this case, which is this class over here. Uh, you can configure the stuff and then you get something like this, right? Mm. This is the power, I believe, uh, part, part of the power of Vadin, the Java side of Vadin, which uh, is only one side. There's another side, which is more, uh, or, or the, the TypeScript side. It's called Vadin Fusion. It's a new product. Uh, my uh, colleague 
Marcus Helbrick is going to have a, um, a talk on it later. So I'll definitely check it out if you if you are interested in in um, in building web applications using Spring Boot and TypeScript. So anyway, let's get back to to this to this part. So reusable components, and you can create your own components, of course. Uh, let me see if I, there was anything important here. Uh, I think there is, that, that was it. Okay, so mm, how can we use these components? Or, okay, before we really, really jump, let me just step a little bit back to, uh, to, the, to the JavaScript world. Uh, in case you are interested in using dividing web components without the Java part, because uh, they are the, the, the components themselves are really, really powerful. Uh, I wrote this guide here on how to use, it's probably one of the easiest ways uh, to do it using Parcel. So thanks to, to this um, bundler, it's super easy to, to use, use, for example, the, the button, Vadim button, where is the HTML here? In any uh, HTML document. Mm. So definitely uh, check that out. Maybe I can share that if you're interested, just in case you're interested. Oh, can I copy this? I'm gonna paste it in the in the chat window if you if you're interested in that. Uh, but um, let's see how to use this from from Java, right? I think that would be uh, very interesting to do. And for that, so. How can you get started? Actually, let's let's do that. So I, you can use uh, uh, start, well, start.vadin.com, which is uh, kind of a wizard to create a new project using Vadin and Spring Boot. And you have Flow framework here. This is the Java world or Fusion, which is what I mentioned before, the TypeScript kind of a world in the UI at least. So what we're interested in in this talk is the Java part. And this is not this is not an idea or anything. It's just a project generated with a. It just has the the preview of how the application would look like, and then you can add or remove all these options here, or add, for example, actually I want a dashboard with has pro components in it though. But you can add maybe a master detail for managing I don't know users in this case is using some entity call. Um, oh, there's user actually. That's pretty. Nice. Um, person sample book, but you can create a new entity and add, add property names and select the, the, job, the um, Java types. This just saves you maybe a, a bit of uh, coding later when you import the uh, project into the IDE. Mm. The theme, you can change it also. You can, for example, use a dark variant of the theme, of the, uh, theme. yeah. And um, in general, set all the colors, typography, everything that you want to change there. Um, this is one way. Then you click download and this, this uh, just creates a, generates a zip file with a Maven project in it that you can import into any uh, ID. Or you can go to the Spring Initializer and just pick button there, which is where I did actually for this uh, demo. I just use it. Um, just created the project like that. And then I added something I added was maybe uh, dev tools, those two, those two things. I clicked generate and I got this project here, the Java demo. Okay, the other thing I did was uh, added, uh, I added a front end directory here. But let's actually delete it. So this is what we would get, right? And if you inspect the POM direct smell, it's just, that fancy there, find spring with start starter. Um, let me extend this a little bit so we see the structure of the of the project. I compiled it once so that it kind of downloads all the dependencies, Java dependencies using Maven and the client side dependencies uh, using uh, npm, which is part of, of Node. So here uh, you will get all the Kind of client side, but this this auto, it, this happens automatically. You need to know anything about Node or Node.js or npm or anything. Uh, you just you just have to really use the uh, Java API. Very good. So we have 
just a Spring Boot application with nothing in it. Let's create now the equivalent of that index. Did I call it index maybe? Index, I guess, index view. And we are going to expose this to, okay, so I don't have much time. I'm gonna show you uh, this uh, very quickly. We're going to expand, expand or expose this to the browser. And we need to extend an existing component. So vertical layout. Then we add a new constructor here. Let me format this a bit nicer. And here we can start adding components. For example, a new H1 that says, uh, hello, I think it's, it was hello. Add a new, oh, no, sorry, no, let's not call add because this can accept multiple components. And let me format the thing like this. Uh, new paragraph that says this is a web component. And we call to have a new avatar animated, animated avatar. With, let's see if I can make it, uh, with this, this image URL. Let me also format this like that so we see what we are doing. And uh, what is that we put here? JCon. So this is the previous project. I'm just moving things. Of course, this doesn't exist. You need to create a new class in the same package. That's fine. This was the name, or was it? It was first the image and then it was the name. And we need to get we need to tell Vadin which tag to use. How do we do that? Kind of be easier than using the tag annotation. To avoid typos, I'm gonna copy again. And then we need to import uh, the module. So we need also this file over here. So I'm gonna copy it and let's create a new directory front end. This is important as to have that name, paste the, the file there, animated avatar. And now we say here, import animated avatar.js. So we have that. And now we have to set uh, these values. So what we need to get is this element. How do we get the element? Cannot be easier than get element. And for the element, we need to set this attribute. Cannot get easier than set attribute. So image, whatever comes from, from there, and the same for the name name all right so there's a typo here so let's try to compile that and see if if it works Whew, there was some fast typing there but let's see let's see um localhost 8080 ha, it worked <laughs> unbelievable i was expecting uh demo effect exceptions here all right, so it's that simple to create that. And of course, uh, you can always, uh, sorry, that was the wrong. Um, so you can always add all the all those components that I show you in the, in the, in the website and the Vine website are available here. So for example, text field, let's say we want to know the name. Let's say we want a combo box of string. It could be of users or products or whatever. Uh, it's called this feedback and the options. This is gonna be strings. So good talk, boring talk. And let's create a new button here to send the feedback. And we probably need to add a click event listener. So we call, for example, a new method called send feedback. However, we need to get the values of this text field. So I'm going to extract this to a new uh, variable and same for this feedback. And the same feedback, we just get the values from there. How do you think we can get the value from the text field? Get value, right? And the same for feedback, get value. And we need to create this method over here. This was name, this was feedback and as you can imagine we can use 
any Java thing here, for example. I'm not going to really implement this, but a service dot send feedback with the name value. Uh, actually, let's call this just name. Name, yeah, much better. Feedback. I'm not going to code this part. And then you show a notification again with another Vadin component. Show thanks. Name. Uh, what else? Uh, feedback. The feedback was feedback. And if we compile this thing, if we compile this thing, we should, this should refresh automatically. Oh, it did. So we have the components here. And let's say, uh, I don't know, John said, uh, oh, what a boring tech talk. Send, thanks John, feedback, boring talk. However, however, Mary, Mary, she thought it was a good talk actually. And she sent that feedback, so it's working. Um, I hope you all agree with, with Mary and you learned something. Um, let me get back to this presentation because I have a, um, where is it, where is the keynote here? So before we go to, to questions, uh, APRES, my, my publisher, uh, they gave me three uh, eBooks to, to give away. So uh, the first three, people that tweet something like Draco here, the Dogo, <laughs> uh, with something that you have learned in this talk or something that you found interesting or a screenshot of, of this thing or, uh, or another screenshot that you have taken, anything goes. Uh, just tweet it and just uh, remember to, to tag. Let me see if I can copy, paste. Okay, I think I managed. Tag, tag these people here. So tag me, tag the uh, organizers of organizers of the uh, conference, and tag Vadin so so we know. And uh, maybe uh, it would be easier also if you follow me, especially if you think you can win, so I can contact you and ask for your email and send you links to um, to download the the, the ebook. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you, thank you for the feedback. Let's see the Twitter. Okay, so far, no, nobody seems to like my book. <laughs> uh, there's time, there's time. At any point, I'll, I'll get back, back to that. All right, so. How do you store animated avatar? Yeah, yes, in a reusable package. Uh, that's a good question. Um, you can use uh, something called a bundler, uh, which is what I showed you maybe in this blog, po blog post. Actually, I think I pasted the URL. There you go. So in this, uh, in this um, article, uh, I show you how to kind of how to do that. It just it, a bundler. What what it does it just takes all the the client side resources and uh, optimize the size of the of, of all these uh, JavaScript files that you have and put them in one one file. So it's so instead of requesting like a lot of JavaScript files, you request only once, which is faster, and you also. Um, get it uh, smaller. So I don't know if that really answer, answers the, the question, but uh, look into that, um, into that uh, direction, maybe bundlers. Uh, all right, uh, as I have good talk. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, Marco. Uh, reading your book already. Oh, nice. Cool. I hope you like it. Um, let me know if you have questions on the book, if you want to discuss something that you, that you saw in the book. How to publish reuse web components. Uh, you can publish it. You can publish those actually, you can use, I mean, if you really want to implement web components, don't do it like, <laughs> I know it sounds horrible, but don't do it like I did in this talk. Use a framework. And the framework that I recommend is lead element. It's lightweight and it's gonna help you. For this case that I showed today, you don't need it because it's very small, simple example to show the basics of web components. But 
once you get into how to update, for example, properties, you need, you'll see that the code starts to grow way, way too much. Uh, and so the, the frameworks will will help you. So lit element, go go that way maybe. Uh, I think there are there are other but other uh, frameworks as well. But that one is is just is really good. And it's what Adam uses. And, and the reason is because it's it's good. Um, you can publish them. Uh, kind of, it's a set. You can publish them. For example, uh, like Vadim does, which is a where is it? An, a module, right? So you'll see that Vadim is over here. Not that. All right, and it's, it's a lot of resources here, of course, but uh, you get the idea, I, I hope. Uh, do you know other ways than Vadin to use web components in Java? Oh, the good, that's a good question. I think any, so there is a GWT, the Google Web uh, Toolkit, and I see another question. What do you think of, of GWT in comparison to Vadin? That's a GWT, GWT. Um, I like GWT. Uh, it's an interesting uh, framework as well. Uh, the the difference with Vadin is that Vadin is server side, so all this code that I showed you is running in the server side. But GWT is uh, is is completely um, uh, client side, so it compiles Java. It has a new compiler, and it compiles that to JavaScript, and that's the part that I I kind of I don't like too much. Uh, does this, okay, I think I missed some other questions. Let me go through, through those. Can you go into a bit more detail about Java JS cross compilation technology? Is this a good base? I, I, I believe it's good base, but it, there is no compilation really in with Vadim. It's, I, I'm not sure if it's still used uh, anywhere internally. Maybe there is, but you really don't have to use it. You don't see it. What there is is a bundler. Uh, using Webpack, and they are evaluating another tool, which is way faster, by the way. Um, so maybe I hope that clarifies a little bit. Uh, what do you, oh, no, I already answered that. Uh, does this give you power to do what you see is what you get, like in using scene builder in JavaFX? Yeah, definitely. There is actually a visual designer for Vadin, but it's it's uh, it's part of the pro um, the pro offer. Uh, you just drag and drop. Uh, things from a uh, to a canvas, all the components, and so that's also pretty neat. It's really nice to see in action, and then you just connect uh, uh, to your own uh, Java code. Which Vadin version would you recommend? Vadin Flow or Vadin Fus uh, Fusion? Maybe it's um, so Vadin Flow or Vadin Fusion. It depends. Uh, if you if you have uh, if you want to, for example, okay. So here's here's the thing. Vadin Flow stores all the components in the HTML uh, session. So that could be a problem in certain scenarios. If you don't need, if you don't want that, then use uh, go with Fusion because there is no you don't need to use uh, any uh, HTML, um, not HTML HTTP uh, session at all. So you can scale in, in 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 different ways. Not that you cannot scale with Vadin Flow. You can using any Java tools for scaling. So um, it really depends. Uh, in my case, I'm a backend Java developer, as you saw by my designing skills with this users. <laughs> so I, I, I really like uh, Vadin Flow. Um, all right. I think, I think I'm getting to the limit of my time. Any other quick quest questions? Maybe we have two minutes or something. Remember to tweet, tweet something, tag me. And the first three, I'll send a link to the ebook so you can uh, find out uh, more about writing the flow in this case, if, if you want to. All right, so I think there are no, no more questions. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you very much for attending this, uh, this talk. I know there were other very interesting uh, talks as well. Hope you enjoyed those. Happy coding, thank you. Don't... Thank you, Mr. Duarte, for this yeah. very interesting talk. Um, oh. And then we're at the end of the session, and we're back in uh, a few minutes uh, on 1 p.m. for the next session. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>